So this tutorial is going to be uh, just a general overview of um, the process and pipeline that uh, I went through animating one of the shots in Sintel. Uh, this particular shot takes place in the ziggurat scene. So you can see there's my reference that I, I did for the scene. And also here is the original animatic that uh, we'll begin with. An OpenGL render here of the uh, finished animation in the animation file. And then finally the render itself after being given to uh, the render and lighting guys. Initially what I'll get is a blend file from Colin containing the entire animatic of that scene. And I've just changed the start and end frames to uh, the shot that I'm going to be working on. I'll then save that as uh, its own file and that becomes the one shot file that will take to final. I might first work on the baby dragon and uh, when this was first animated the rig wasn't finished yet so as you can see there there's just a very simple rig. Um, so I'm going to re-import the baby dragon uh, but first I'm just going to select the baby dragon mesh and change it to a bounds view. And then when I bring in my new baby dragon uh, character, I can at least uh, still see where the old one was so that uh, uh, I have a bit of an idea of the composition that Colin wanted, just to have there as a reference. I've then just placed my 3D cursor um, close enough near the, the bounding box. I've just hit Shift F1 which will allow me to go in and uh, import my baby dragon group. So if I go to the baby dragon in uh, chars folder, I can click on that and then inside group, there is the group named baby dragon simple. And because I'm animating, I'm bringing in the, the simple group rather than the, the high poly version. I've also made sure to hit the uh, link checkbox as well. Now I won't see it yet until I Shift A and then add a group instance. And then if I hit Alt, Control, P and type in rig, I can add in a proxy rig. So even if the baby dragon changes between the high poly and the low poly, or even the low poly changes in any way, uh, it will always be updated when I open that shot file. So what I'll do now is just select the baby dragon's root bone here, the one with the four arrows. And I'll just click this here so that uh, only its layer is showing. There's no other bones getting in the way. And down the bottom of the timeline header here, I can activate a uh, keying set by clicking on it. And I'm gonna choose lock rot or location rotation. This means whenever I hit I to add a keyframe, it will just go ahead and add location rotation keys without bringing up the menu for me to choose. And so with this preparation done, I can then just begin uh, grabbing and moving, rotating the baby dragon's root bone and just keeping it uh, in about the same area as Colin's composition. I can also come down and just uh, click drag the corner of my window here a couple of times and then change those windows to bring up uh, my graph editor which is always very handy. And this is where I'll do most of my animation tweaking after I've put in the main key poses. And because the graph editor now supports multiple curves, I'll spend most of my time here rather than the dope sheet editor or the action editor. I can view the channels of any bone just by hitting the little arrow on the left of the bone name. I can also left click and shift left click uh, to select multiple channels as well as uh, A to select all. And then if I hit V, uh, I can toggle visibility of those curves. So in that case, I just select it all with A and hit V to show all the curves of that bone. By hitting Control H, I can um, tell whether to show handles of the keys or not. And this button down here is uh, to only show curves for the uh, bones or objects you have selected. So as you can see, if I turn that off, it will show every single curve in my scene, which 
can be a little bit complex. So I usually keep that on when I'm animating and it will just show curves of the bones that I have selected in my 3D view. So for this initial very basic flight path, I'm just using a mix of uh, my 3D view, placing the root bone um, every 10 or so frames using the up and down arrow keys. And then any tweaks that need to be made, I can just come in and uh, do so with the curves in the graph editor. I can also set up a, a camera view in my other spare window there. And using the top uh, window, I just use that to rotate around my 3D view. So I'll just continue on with that. And something finally worth mentioning is in the view properties of the graph editor, real-time updates will uh, just make sure that any tweaks that I do in the graph editor show up in the 3D view. So here's the state of the file after I've gone through and just added the basic flight path. I've moved the dragon a little bit closer to the camera and I've just been looking at some birds outside, seeing how they chase and swoop. And uh, I also played around with the rotation a bit, uh, doing things like pointing the uh, baby dragon in the direction he was about to, uh, to move a little bit earlier, makes the uh, animation a little less mechanical. And one other thing that will make it look a little less mechanical is a, uh, a flapping wing cycle. And uh, if I just hit Shift F1 and go into the Chars folder again, uh, this time I can click on Baby Dragon Cycles instead of just the Baby Dragon file. And then if I go to the folder Action, um, there's a selection of uh, animation cycles that Bjorn did that are just wonderful. So I'm going to come in and select the BD Flying Normal. Don't forget to hit Link and then load that in. From there, I'll change my uh, camera window to the NLA window. Down here, I'm going to select this uh, button that will uh, bake my animation into an NLA strip. I'll change to uh, hold forward instead of hold so that uh, nothing gets overwritten behind the strip. And then using the hotkey Shift A, I can type in the start of the action that I imported and then select that to bring it in as its own strip. I'll just move it down so that it's at the very start of my timeline. Here it shows frame 3 to 11, but I'll just change that so that it's correct, frame 1 to 9. And if I scroll down the properties window, you'll find cyclic strip, I'll check that, and also animated strip time, which means we can control the uh, how fast or slow the the flapping cycle happens via an another curve. And uh, I think we'll go and make that curve now. If I go into the dope sheet and then uh, click new in the action editor, I'll just type in the name I'd like for this speed curve. In this case, I've used BD speed curve, which uh, is sort of the same naming convention as the other baby dragon action files. And then uh, to add a key and create this curve, I'm just going to right click on the strip time parameter and then select insert keyframe. And the parameter is zero at uh, frame one and I've just shift right arrowed to go to my very last frame. And then I'll just type in another parameter a bit higher. You don't have to, but I do it out of habit and then add another keyframe. So now we've got a key at the very start and end of our uh, shot. And then in the graph editor here you can see got BD speed curve with the uh, one channel which is the uh, speed curve itself. And as you can see the uh, the baby dragon is flapping its wings but very slowly as it's only going through one flap cycle once through the entire shot as that's where I set the parameter at the start and end. So basically the, uh, the flap, wing flap animation is around 9, 10 frames basically. Um, so you can kind of guess that if uh, the very top key here is say about 50 or 60, then the dragon will flap its wings around 6 times during the course of the shot. And also any time I move a key uh, horizontally left or right, uh, that basically makes the key happen sooner or later in uh, the actual time of the shot. And anything in between um, can be changed with extra keys by duplicating with Shift-D. Uh, I can do things like um, flatten out horizontally an area, and that will stop 
the dragon from flapping altogether or I can make areas um, much steeper and that will uh, cause the dragon to uh, flap his wings much quicker. So as we preview through the animation you can see a it's a bit of an extreme example but it works there's no flapping and then suddenly whoa, starts really increasing the speed and I'll just continue to uh, play with this speed curve and try and match the flatter and steeper areas um, to the points in my animation where I want the baby dragon to uh, flap a bit harder to gain height or uh, usually stop flapping altogether as he glides. Okay, here is the speed curve I came up with for the shot. And if I just go back to the start here and play it through, you can see there's a fairly general flapping motion, then it stops for a bit, and then as he has to quickly gain height, the uh, wings flap very fast again, and that's that sudden steep change in the curve. And then he slowly levels out again as he has to dive once more. Something that I figure might uh, help out the animation in this shot is that the baby dragon, when um, he isn't flapping his wings, when the speed curve is basically horizontal, his wings are still just held out and frozen. And uh, I didn't think that was quite natural. I usually notice when birds uh, will dive, they'll tuck their uh, wings back. And this is something I can actually add by adding a new strip to the NLA editor. Now if I come in and just change um, to the layers of my character that have the wing controls, I'll let up the left and right and just pose his wings behind his body. And that will be the pose that we can blend in and out of uh, whenever he begins to glide downwards. That looks pretty good. So now I'll switch from the graph editor to the dope sheet again, the action editor, and add a new action. And I'll name this one BD Dive. Now I need to make some keys for this pose um, that can be converted into an NLA strip. So I'll just go in and select all the bones that I animated there, only the ones that I changed the pose of, which are the wing controls and the two arm controls there in FK. And if, then if I hit I to just set a key, you can see there, the keys are there which I'll duplicate, and it's only the channels that I selected. Now what this means is when I bring it into the NLA editor as I'm doing now, just hitting Shift A and selecting the BD dive, it will overwrite uh, the animation underneath it of the original flying cycle, but only the bones contained in the BD dive action will be replaced. So now I'm just moving the NLA strip over the area of the shot that I want to see this glide pose. And then just by changing the end frame, I can shorten the strip to my liking. And since it's only one pose, it's just two keys of the exact same pose, um, I can just play with the start and end frame without any worry of losing any animation. And there I can change the blend in and blend out, and that will naturally let the pose come and go. I can then just detach the animation from the action editor with the X sign. And then we can see the blending into the glide pose, the dive pose, and then back out. And I can also play around with the start and end frame for the length that the pose happens and the blend in and out. So that makes the animation look a lot better now. I'm pretty happy with that. And I can delete my original reference from the animatic at this point as well. So. The dragon needs a uh, bird to chase as well, so I might uh, now include this bird into the scene. I've just used Shift S to um, put my cursor to selected of the root bone, and then I can just left click somewhere a little bit in front of the baby dragon. 
So if I come back out into the chars directory again, I'm going to choose bird this time and then go into its groups. And then I'll select again the bird group from there. Select linked again and load. Then I'll just uh, make sure my cursor is in a good spot for the bird to, uh, to load. Then I'll just shift A down and add the group. And just as I did with the baby dragon, just alt control P and add a rig. And then I can just begin starting its basic flight path as well, as I did with the baby dragon earlier. So I've just set a key for that with the I key, and then I just go into the graph editor and begin uh, again going through every, uh, in, in about 10 frame blocks, and positioning the bird in front of the baby dragon as if it's being chased. I also might start blocking Sintel from the reference that I made earlier. Now to uh, speed the scene up, I can always come down here to simplify and just take the subdivisions down to zero and also the child particles if there are any. And as you can see, uh, even in playback now while recording the screen, the uh, scene plays through a lot quicker. I'll uh, just control tab into pose mode after selecting the armature and I'll uh, click A to select all the bones that I'm going to be animating with. And I can just, uh, in the graph editor, see all the, uh, the curves that are already there and I'll just go and delete them. And being at frame one now, I can just go in and start posing Sintel into the first pose that I'd like, which uh, ties in from the shot before where she's shouting out to the baby dragon, cheering it on. Now I have my uh, reference up in another monitor at the moment, and what I'm doing is just scrubbing through that to the point that I think links up to uh, the, uh, the point of my shot and just matching up the pose, um, adding a bit more of an extreme uh, pose if I need to as well. Now I'd like to get rid of these lines in my 3D view, so if I hit N and go into the properties, I can just go down to display and turn off relationship lines. And that makes the workspace a little bit clearer for me to animate. When I notice the character is still moving a bit, and that's because I uh, forgot to turn on the layer with the root bone and delete its keys. So that's done now. And the character is completely static with that one pose. And now I'll get set up to uh, begin animating through the rest of the shot. I'll start with the uh, hips here, and I'll just switch uh, my NLA window into a camera view again. And I've moved about 10 frames forward from the start frame where I put the first pose. And I'm just blocking through the second uh, main pose that I uh, gathered from my reference material. Basically went through the video and had a look at the uh, points that I thought were a fairly main um, moment in the action. So it might be at a point just before the direction of the body changes or the uh, most extreme position of a pose or cheer. And I'm just going to find those that I like the most and add them through the shot. For my blocking, so I can see the poses more clearly, I'd like to uh, avoid a smooth transition between the poses and just have them snap directly. And by selecting all the curves and coming to key, interpolation mode, 
and selecting constant, you can see the uh, the curves there go completely straight until the next key, and then they'll they'll just uh, directly snap to the next pose over one frame. And there you can see the snap happen, and that can always help me to see all the poses I'm animating as I'm blocking Sintel before adding the details. So here's how Sintel looks after adding those blocking poses in. It feels like it uh, matches the reference well and uh, is a good foundation to move forward with uh, polish and final details. So down here in the graph editor, everything's still as stepped constant curves. If I hit Shift T, which is the hotkey for the curve type selection, interpolation mode, I can select Bezier again and everything goes back to smooth. Now there's still of course at this point a, a good few kinks to smooth out, but the foundation's there and that's the important bit. From there uh, the details really are the, the easy bit, but I'll spend quite a bit of time making sure that the, the blocking works well for later on and uh, sometimes it can be hard to tell how it will look later on with details but um, after a few, well, quite a few um, practices it becomes easier to guess whether something will work or not down the line. Now I'd only like to work on this first part here when she's stepping down off her little step after shouting out. So I can actually make a preview range by uh, clicking this button here in the timeline header and then by hitting E at the frame I'd like to be my end frame it would just block it off at that point and you can see that the graph editor darkens outside the preview range. So one of the first things I might fix are these IK controllers. There's a key at the front there that has them moving far away from her body. Now if I deselect these two checkboxes which are the IK influence that I want to keep I can just box select all the remaining keys and delete those. And then uh, her IK hand controls are much closer to her body. And as she switches from FK to IK controls, there we go, it's much smoother than it was before. And that won't be too hard to just tweak. Also something else is the, uh, the general bounce of her hips, which really control a lot of her, her body. And uh, by just uh, selecting the Z location channel and hitting V, that will only show that one channel. And I can play with the uh, the handles by selecting the the handle edges and and translating them with G, and also scaling them to give a bit more of a sharper angle to any key. And by playing with these, I can aim for uh, that look that my reference had of me really bouncing down with my weight. It takes a little while to get something that works but it's always worth it, so I'll just continue on doing that. So here's what I came up with for this first part of the shot. Stepping off the step and getting her footing correct. So you can see I've manipulated the handles here quite a bit to get the effect that I like. That really long handle there allows her to stay higher for that little bit longer, keep some hang time, and then she drops down a bit quicker as she lets her, her weight drop onto the other foot. And if I get rid of the preview range, you can see a bit more here, though I haven't done too much work on it at this point. I've also come in, as you can see, and added a uh, flap cycle to the bird as well uh, that I just brought in the same way I did for the baby dragon um, from one of its actions in bird cycles and then added a speed curve as well and edited that. Now with the basic motion done of the uh, the hips coming down, I can also play around with the uh, rotation as well. Uh, the rotation of the hips gives a huge indication of, um, for example, what leg the weight is on. Um, if Sintel's weight is on her right leg, for example, her hips uh, will be much higher on the right side and lower on the left as the uh, 
the weight pushes her hip up and the other side down. So I can change that just by coming in, selecting those four quaternion rotation channels, and then hitting V. Something I might work on from here is uh, that hand arc as she jumps and cheers with her hand. Uh, I notice it's quite mechanical and uh, direct, the motion, and uh, I might work to make that a little bit more natural. So with the left IK control selected, I'll just come in and select the three location channels and make them visible. And then I can just play with the uh, the blue curve, which is the uh, up and down Z motion. And the red channel there is the X axis, which will give me a bit of left and right motion. So here I've done some more work to the shot. I've uh, basically just gone through the whole shot now, uh, rather than just the beginning, and polished out the hips, um, and also giving the arms some more natural curves and arcs, just like I did with the cheer. Uh, the legs aren't uh, completely worked on yet at all. Um, they kind of work a bit at the start, and then I didn't really do much more to them. But I'll usually pay more attention to the hips, um, as the legs can really are really there just to give the illusion of uh, holding the weight of the hips. So uh, sometimes I'll work on them quite a bit later on in the in the shot. I've also gone through and uh, tweaked the arms quite a bit, um, making sure that the controls don't go too far away from the body. Um, and that causes a thing called IK snap where the arm control moves so far out that the arm can't get any straighter and just kind of uh, snaps out in this completely straight position. And uh, when you move the control back and it starts bending again, sometimes that can be quite abrupt. And I'll also make sure to um, animate the shoulders along with the hands as that can, um, they're directly tied into each other in terms of how far you can reach. You can see as she cheers there, her shoulder moves up. And here's the final step of the animation file. I'll just give it a play through for you there. So some of the things I've done as well at this point um, to finish off the animation is to uh, do a pass on the head especially, looking at my reference and turning and tilting um, it to the right places. And I also did uh, a pass now on the legs, just placing them under the uh, updated hips to make it all look like they're naturally holding her weight. Um, and really, at this point, I'll just uh, go through the animation, repeat it, repeat it billions of times. Okay, not billions, but a lot. And um, I'll even do OpenGL render outs and uh, even open them in, in a program like VLC and flip the video horizontally to get some fresh eyes on it. Um, it will also ask a lot of other people around me for feedback. Um, you know, even if it's family, friends, they don't have to know uh, 3D animation to uh, notice if something looks a little bit weird or a little bit off. Uh, at Durian we would do uh, a daily, most days, in the morning and uh, we'd show what we had done the previous day and uh, then we'd have a, some fresh eyes to look at it, the person who had animated it, a good night's sleep, and others could uh, give their feedback as well, and you'd spend that day then improving on, uh, on what you have. Now this current uh, proxy Sintel is uh, fantastic for animating with, but I really want to see what it will look like in the final shot. So if I hit Shift F1 again, and then navigate down to uh, my Sintel.blend. I'm going to then go into Groups, and then load just the Sintel group, rather than the Sintel simple. Make sure that link is checked, and uh, 
you see that it won't load directly. But we can do a great thing here if I select uh, Sintel's actual proxy model and come down here into the uh, object options. Just delete the text underscore simple and there we go. It just becomes Sintel and is switched with the group of that name. So that's a really easy way to uh, switch between the, the low and high res Sintel. And with this being the, uh, the model that's shown in the final render, I can go through and check things like, uh, you know, small intersections that are happening um, and also animate some of the more detailed parts of the model like her armor or uh, anything else like that. Usually when we have a shot that has dialogue, Yarn will send us the uh, the voice file in and uh, we'll animate to that. Uh, but since this wasn't exactly dialogue, uh, I was able to choose the timing for the cheers and just animate it without sound. And Yarn added all that in later using uh, Helena's voice from the voice recording session. So basically after all that's done and uh, Colin likes it, the other animation guys like it, and I like it myself, and uh, we've... Uh, the deadline is usually not too far away. I'll send the file over to uh, the SVN and the render guys are able to then take that into the scene that they're lighting uh, with the environment and whatnot and put it all together for the final shot. So that's a uh, basic rundown of uh, animating a shot in Sintel. Hope you enjoyed.